When you think of seaweed, you may think of sushi, toothpaste, ice cream, soup, snacks. You may not think of livestock feed, jet fuel, fertilizer, plastic, or plant-based meat. Seaweed has become the fastest growing form of aquaculture in the world, praised for its low cost, versatility, and environmental benefits. There's this perception that it can kind of contribute to many different sustainable development goals. It can just do lots of things for us. But warming temperatures and volatile weather are making it harder to grow. Like in Palawan, where lush seaweed farms are mostly managed by women. Here, the promise of seaweed is facing the reality of climate change. And it's putting the future of this miracle crop at risk. Inaasahan mo mamang ayon mayroon pa ako tatlong tunilada ay biglang dumating po si Bagyo. Hindi mo nakuha mam. A few weeks ago, I caught a flight from Manila to Quezon, a coastal town on the island of Palawan, where farmers have been growing seaweed for over 30 years. Ngayon mam nagbabadbad, natatanggal po kami na seaweed sa lubid mam. Kasi ito Ano na naman, itatransplant namin. On a given day, they attach seaweed cuttings to ropes then take them offshore to farms of about 2,500 square meters. About six weeks later, they harvest the seaweed and set out to dry in the sun for a few days before selling it for processing. Most of this is made into chips and noodles. But the most lucrative products, carrageenan and agar, are extracted, exported, and used as thickening gels in foods and pharmaceuticals. Yan po ang pinaka mahalaga yung karajinan. Oo, yun po yung ginagamit natin sa mga pagkain, sa ice cream, marami pang iba. The Philippines pioneered carrageenan cultivation in the 1970s, and it still comprises 94% of the country's total seaweed export value, making the nation the second top producer of carrageenan in a $900 million global market. Carrageenan and agar come from red seaweed, which makes up the majority of seaweed production globally. Increased demand for natural additives and vegan food and cosmetics is driving demand for carrageenan. Marami po kami na mga uh, pamilya nakapagtapos ang aming mga anak dahil po sa seaweed farming lang. Na masaya ako na dahil po sa seaweed farming napatapos ko po yung aking agricultural engineer ngayon. It's estimated that there are about 200,000 families that farm seaweed in the Philippines. The rice has coincided with a decline in traditional fishing due to pollution, warming seas, and overfishing. As in many parts of the world, the majority of people who farm seaweed are women because the part-time work close to home can be balanced with child care. Lahat ng mga anak ko mam marunong magtali. Sama pa kaya sa akin mag-ano ma mag mag mag-ano kami maghulog kami ng aga magtanim sa dagat. Sumasama mo nagsasagwan lang po kami. They earn anywhere from $360 to $715 a month, compared to about $90 made by small-scale fishermen and have low operating costs. You don't need fertilizers, you don't need fuel, low cost and um, high returns. Food production systems are responsible for about uh, nearly 30% of greenhouse gas emissions, so if we can have a component to the food system that is climate positive that will greatly alleviate the pressure on the uh, on climate, but it's also very healthy and affordable. There are other environmental benefits too. One is the role it can play in reducing what's called eutrophication. This is when too many nutrients end up in the water and wreak havoc on biodiversity. We pour lots of nutrients onto our agricultural lands in order to make terrestrial crops grow faster and bigger. But a lot of those nutrients end up flowing off rivers and down into the coast. There's a lot of evidence to show that seaweed farms can absorb a lot of those nutrients. It can also be fed to cows to reduce the methane they burp into the atmosphere, which is a big contributor to climate change. 
Studies show that one spoonful per day of an additive derived from red seaweed can reduce this emissions by over 80%. The challenge is doing this at scale. Then there's the promise that seaweed could potentially suck up and sequester huge amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Like trees, kelp takes in carbon dioxide, which stays trapped inside even after it dies and falls to the seafloor. Scaling this would essentially mean building massive seaweed farms and sinking them deep into the ocean. But some are urging companies to hold off until more is known about the impacts that it could have on local ecosystems. If it decomposes, it can, com it can consume significant amount of oxygen. It can aggravate problems of deoxygenation that are rising already in the ocean. So we need to have that understanding of impacts and responses clear before we start such practice. Back on Palawan, Climate change has created more immediate challenges. As temperatures warm, direct sunlight and heat have left seaweed close to the surface, vulnerable to disease, which has contributed to a decline in production in the last decade. Yung nagkakasakit yung agar namin, may ice-ice. Yung nagkaputi-puti siya, ma'am, tapos napuputol agad. Kailangan maagapan mo yan, ma'am, maiharvest mo agad. Kasi pag hindi mo naiharvest, Pag matagal ka nakabalik, wala na halos laman ang lubid mo. Hulog na lahat. Farms are also being hit with more extreme weather. A 2016 study in Nature Geoscience found that landfalling typhoons in East and Southeast Asian countries have intensified by 12 to 15 percent since the late 1970s. Kasi malakas ang hangin, malaki ang alon. E pagpunta mo doon, balik mo parang, parang mag-ano ka ba na... Ay, daming nahulog ng agar kasi siyempre sa laki ng alon. Some here are banding together to adapt. Ngayon, hindi na po, hindi na ito babalik sa pababa, kundi painit na painit. Last year, Marty and about 120 other seaweed farmers started the Cherish Fisherfolk Cooperative to scale their operations. They meet regularly to discuss ways to adapt to the changing climate like typhoon warning systems. Kung halimbawa ma may maaga po, may maagang information, maririnig po namin ay bagyo at alam namin na pwede na pong harvestin po. Yun po ma'am, nag-harvest na po agad guys sa mawala. Oo, yun po yung ano. They're also asking for government investment so they can expand farming offshore where the water is cooler and less conducive to seaweed disease. Sana mabigyan na po kami ng gamit para sa deep sea. No, tulad ng mga pang cage na fiberglass boat na pwede na pong ikargahan ng individual. They're not alone in their search for solutions. As global demand for seaweed grows, researchers from Manila to Los Angeles are identifying climate resilient strains of the crop, culturing them in labs, and distributing seedlings to farmers. One of the goals of the project is actually to develop uh, new strains that are more resilient to diseases but are also good in terms of their growth rate as well as in their capacity to produce really good carrageenan because after all that's 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 the main product that's uh, that the seaweed industry wants long ignored in the west Seaweed farming is now seen by companies and researchers alike as a rising star in the face of both climate change and the global food crisis. But scaling it will mean learning from the failures and success of small operations like Cherish. We estimate there are about 2,000 square kilometers of seaweed farms globally, and that contrasts with about 50 million square kilometers of croplands and uh, pastures on land. So therefore, the scope for a uh, farming seaweed in the ocean is huge. There are many risks um, when it comes to farming seaweed on a large scale, but there also are, could be many benefits, and it's something that we're not going to really find out unless we actually try. Kaya yun po ang pangarap namin na maging uh, maganda ang pag, pagbinta namin. Ay galing Quezon to, Quezon Palawan. Ito maganda, malinis. Ay ganun po. 
Ayan, sana yun ang pangarap ng anak. Hi, I'm Mary Jo, back in Manila after reporting the story from Palawan. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.